we have Gladys and Beatrice here from Incarnation who are being received into the Episcopal Church today. And as you know, the heartbeat of that service is a series of commitments that they make. And we, in our participation, both promise to support them, but renew our own commitments. The Gospel reading today makes a very, very important distinction about how those commitments get lived out. More often than not, when we think about commitments that we are making to Christ, we are thinking about things we are going to do for Him. In other words, the commitment to Jesus naturally results in very clear actions, things that we choose to do, whether it's being available for God to use us, in service to the poor, whether it means financial contributions, whether it means making the time to get alone with God and have quiet time, to be regular in worship, receiving the Eucharist, I mean, you can make a very, very long list. All of which are good, all of which actually are right. Those are things that the scripture asks of us, in a sense, things that we are to do for him. But Jesus says something slightly different. He does in no way undercut the call to do for. But in this passage, Jesus talks about not doing things for him so much as doing things from him, out of his sustenance, out of his presence. In other words, and I would even go so far as to say that it is the doing for that actually results from the doing from, and not so much the other way around. Here's what I mean by that. We, we can exhaust ourselves with a lot of to-do lists that we need to do for the sake of the kingdom, because there really are a lot of things that we're to do. But the Christian life lived well is not a series of to-do lists. It's actually a posture of union with Christ, feeding on his spirit, receiving from him, not just the to-do list, but a work that he wishes to accomplish in us so that he can operate through us. And when he is operating through us, that's when the to-do list takes on spirit and life. And things can happen both in us and through us that often surprise us, um, that we didn't anticipate. But they are, in fact, part of the adventure. So today, to think of Jesus as the one who gives us his flesh, the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world, invites us, in fact, to receive from him that we may live out of the nourishment that he provides. That's actually a very, very different posture, at least for me, than the living for. Here's what happened just today. I had a breakfast meeting this morning. I come into the office, and I'm, I've already read the lessons. I'm thinking about them. And I sit down, and, I, and I'm thinking about, OK, what should I say? And I start putting a little list together. And you know what I can do? I can literally feel the adrenaline inside of me begin to gear up as I'm getting ready to do something, you see, which in this case is to preach and preside. There is this kind of anticipation that happens inside of me that fuels this in a way. But as I sat down and I started reading the John lesson again, so my body relaxed. And there was this very clear sense that what was happening in that moment was that I was receiving from him. That the experience of reading that scripture was in fact an act of communion. Of communion with God. And realizing in that moment, in that act of communion and the read scripture and the commentaries, that God was inviting me into something more than doing the to-do list within the context of this liturgy. Mm -hmm. 
Instead, what God was actually inviting me into was receiving from him, by his Holy Spirit, the sustenance necessary so that it comes from him rather than for him. Does the distinction make sense? This, it's okay to nod your head or not. <laughs> because I, I think that's the heartbeat of what Jesus is trying to say when he describes himself as the bread of life. And that the one who eats this bread will live forever. He's inviting us into a relationship that nourishes our souls, that feeds on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving in such a way that that divine sustenance becomes the fuel out of which we do the things he asks us to do. In other words, it's not a negation of the to-do, but it's from what source does the to-do get accomplished. Mm -hmm. And it's from him. It's out of what he provides for us, the nourishment that he works within us. So I would, I would say this, that even as we go through the renewal of the promises that are at the heartbeat of a service where we receive these two ladies into the life of this communion, I would want to say that the commitment that is being asked of us is not just the things to do, will you, will you, will you, but it's actually a commitment to somehow, by God's mercy, live in Him. Live through him. Less adrenaline, more spiritual power. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Amen.